Hi there, and welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the topic of units of dental activity. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So let's get started. Welcome to the second lesson on NHS dentistry. This time we're going to look at units of dental activity and how these relate to being a general dental practitioner. So the current contract for NHS dentistry in the UK was set out in 2006 and this was a targeted approach as in a dentist is given a target of number of treatments to perform in a year which are measured in UDAs which stands for units of dental activity. A UDA is in measurement of what dental treatment is provided so each form of dental treatment be it a filling or a crown for example is measured in a different number of UDAs. So since this contract was released in 2006 England and Wales have been paid based on the number of UDAs that they complete each year. In Scotland, it's slightly different. They're still paid by the number of items of treatment they provide. Um, and the UDAs are a value to the dentist. So for each one they complete, they get paid a certain fee. So when a dentist meets their target of UDAs to complete, they get paid for this and rewarded for it. This system was set up to try and make the NHS more accessible and provide dental services via the NHS to all of the people in the country. There are some slight problems with UDAs because if a dentist is, for example, given 6,000 UDAs to complete a year and they complete these before the year is out, they then have no more treatments that they can provide from the NHS and get paid for. So for this reason, you do get some dentists who would do some additional work privately to subsidise their income so that they're not running out of treatments that they can provide in a year and they can continue practising for the full 12 months rather than running out of treatments, say, eight or nine months in. So the amount that you get paid and the number of units of dental activity that you provide are calculated based on their treatment plan. So for example here we have treatment plan 1 and treatment plan 2, which are two things given to separate patients, treatment plan 1 to patient A and treatment plan 2 to patient B. And both of these treatment plans have different amounts of treatment in them, however all of the treatment in both plans falls into the category of band 2. This means they're both worth three units of dental activity and that's it. So the dentist will get paid exactly the same amount for both these treatment plans, regardless of the fact that they contain different amounts of work. So this is very important because you have different treatments fall into different bands. You've got the band one, band two, and band three treatments. And regardless of how many out of the same band you do, you will get paid the units of dental activity relevant to the highest band of the type of treatments you're performing. So what are some of the problems which are associated with using units of dental activity? Since it's a process of working towards a target, it means that there's a bit of a targeted approach by dentists and they're just trying to fill these quotas and see as many patients as possible rather than focusing on pet care for each individual patient and spending the time with them that is really necessary. Dentists may often rush their appointments as well because they want to see as many patients as they can and build up the number of units of dental activity that they performed. This means that patients aren't necessarily getting the care that they really should because they may actually require longer appointments or some more time with the dentist to get the treatments done to the correct standard, whereas dentists are actually rushing through these patients' appointments to try and see as many as possible in the day. So 70% of dentists are finding that they aren't having enough time to spend with the patients that they want because they're trying to meet the targets set out by the NHS and therefore booking in as many patients as possible rather than spending the time they need with each individual one. So what are the potential ways this could be solved? Well, there was a report carried out which found that it wasn't really logical to have a contract set up in this way. And the British Dental Association have also said that it's quite unhelpful to have UDAs as a measurement of dental activity and a way of a dentist providing treatment from the NHS from both the dentist and the patient's perspective. So what they believe is that instead of having UDAs, there should be rewards based on the treatment given to patients which is necessary, as opposed to the number of patients and the number of treatments provided overall. This would involve rewarding patients for things such as oral hygiene advice, 
um, and how to floss properly. So it's educating patients and therefore preventing further problems rather than just the amount of treatments they actually perform, since it's a lot more important to prevent things from happening with patients as opposed to just treating it, which is what is currently being rewarded. So there are some changes which have been proposed and are trying to be brought in now. There was a contract piloted in 2011 um, and the prototype was um, modelled in 2015 as well. This is a prototype for rewarding patients for patient care and as well as for treatments carried out. So for things such as oral hygiene advice and preventative care, as opposed to just number of fillings, for example, that they're actually performing. This new contract is not yet finalised, but it should be released very soon. So now it's your turn. We're going to have a look at a question which you might get asked if you're asked something about this topic. We'll have a look at an example answer and see what you think, uh, see how you can take your ideas from this as well in case you get asked this question in an interview. So the question we're going to look at is what are your thoughts on the NHS dental contract? And if you got asked this, it would be really important that you understand what the contract is like at the moment and therefore you can give your own opinion and your own views on it as well. So here we have an example answer to this question. If you want to have a read through it, just pause the video now and you can read it at your own time. But we think this is a really good answer. They've talked about what they understand from the dental contract at the moment, as well as the benefits and drawbacks of what's available. They've also said about how they know that new contract is being trialled, which is really important as it shows they're up to date with what's happening in dentistry and what changes are occurring at the moment. So overall, it's a good answer. You want to try and get the balance of positives and negatives and show that you've fully understood the topic that you're talking about. So that was lesson two and lesson two is now complete. I hope this has given you a better understanding about the units of dental activity and the type of NHS contract, which is currently in play in the UK, but also the changes which are occurring to it as well. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.